Well, we're getting ready to um, leave uh, the mooring here just off uh, Bangor Pier and I just wanted to thank our subscriber really a lot for uh, loaning us this mooring. Um, it's just meant that we've actually had a break, just relaxed, chill, you know, but I have to say the other good thing is uh, we've been here just under two weeks. Not on this mooring for two weeks. Not on this mooring for two weeks, but just in the Menai Straits for two weeks. And the solar panels, brilliant. Just, you know, it's just the fact that you've, you know, you can actually be on a mooring with solar panels, but the water is starting to get low now, <laughs> which is why I'm in need of a boat, another shower. <laughs> But I haven't got enough water for a boat shower, but never mind. Yeah, we're down to one half tank. The other tank is empty. Exactly. So uh, we're just getting time for the water. So two weeks seems to be our max. <laughs> one and a half tanks lasted two weeks. Yeah, one and a half tanks, two weeks. So that's not too bad, really. Um, but yeah, so we're uh, getting ready. But thank you very much, subscriber. We set off to Carnarvon for some shopping and to meet up with Gaynor's mum and brother. We had a flotilla to accompany us through the swellies. The part was soon over and it was just a run down the street. see the advantages of a, a build keeler. The, it's low tide, all the boats, apart from the couple up there, are all out of the water but they're just standing on their little stubby feet and they look great. What? Mum, what do you think of uh, my crazy lifestyle living on a boat? Lovely. Be lovely. It is lovely. After family and shopping, it was back up the street to Menai. Well, Bardsey Sound looks very like Menai, doesn't it? I shouldn't be surprised that we change our minds <laughs> because we're terrible. Um, for doing it but basically what happened was we were down in uh, Carnarvon we just planned Barsley Sound when we found out um, a couple of things in sequence really first of all the parcel that I was going to collect at Pafeli wasn't going to turn up and I can pick up um, I can get the depth logger it's basically the, the speed locker sorted in Conway on Tuesday. Um, there was going to be firing all the way in Cardigan Bay for an entire week. So going south was going to be problematic. Um, and that's from, the, um, that's from the Navy or the Army or the Air the Force. Well, the Air Force or something like that. Military. Military. They were going to basically be dropping um, 
uh, bombs <laughs> all in Cardigan Bay for the entire week, which means that you'd have to do a massive detour just to avoid them. And um, the third thing was a lot of people were going on about um, down south and they say that at the moment it's really, really crowded. Um, so we made these sort of like, heard all these various things and we decided, you know what, why don't we go to Scotland? <laughs> so once we decided to go to Scotland, it meant that we'd come up to uh, the morning ball that we've got, sort out our speed logger on Tuesday and then go on from there should be good fun but i came through the swellies and i have to say it was much easier having a track to follow <laughs> i was like yay <laughs> easy peasy never had to do it from all the pilotage and i'm like oh there's the line i'll just follow that <laughs> but anyway i did it and um you know i'm keeping my hand in but what could do with some more sailing? I really could, but I'm enjoying, enjoying just chilling, really. So, Gator has magically transmogrified into me. <laughs> All this just so that I can actually see you. Yeah, this is about take 67. <laughs> um, so, oh, after the Swellies Passage, it was time to have a bit of a late breakfast because somebody on the boat, not me, ate all the cereal this morning and by the time we got the cereal and all the rest of it, it was time to leave because that's the way the tides work and um, so after our little nerve-wracking charge through the Swellies, um, it was time for breakfast. I say nerve-wracking because generally speaking, when we do the Swellies, we go southwest, we go that way. Um, we come from Menai and we go out the other end and we cross Carnarvon Bar and we go off and do our thing. It's the first time in about nine years we've come the other way. We've come from Carnarvon through to Menai. Um, and it's the first time I've ever done it on Salty Lass. So, mm. <laughs> <laughs> definitely a bit of nerves. Um, on the other issue of where we're going, um, Gain has already alluded to things like, you know, the military dropping tons of ordnance in, Card in Cardigan Bay, parcels not turning up and things like that. Um, people advising us that the marinas are jam-packed and that the sillies are, you know, full of boats. Um, yeah, another reason to add to the uh, list is the fact that we bought all the pilotage for the Hebrides uh, earlier in the season and we bought the charts. And then we failed to get round fair ahead and because of that we wind up coming to Liverpool, get the boat maintenance done and the pilotage is just sitting down there gathering dust and if we go on down south we're going to have to buy pilotage for down south, we're going to have to buy charts for down south and we've already got pilotage we're not using. So it seems to make a bit more sense to go to areas which are less overrun where there is um, lower population density, uh, we have all the pilotage, we have all the charts, an area that we really wanted to cruise this summer and I think we've just been given the opportunity to do it, so we've just gone for it really, haven't we? Oh, absolutely. It's just the way it is. So, yeah, we were going to go down and the rest of it, but it just doesn't feel that now is the time. So, we'll leave down south for a little longer and we'll come back down there. It was a shame because there some people I wanted to meet on the way down and it's just not going to happen at this point. We're going to have to wait a bit, unless, of course, they'll come flying north and bring their boats up this end. <laughs> um, so... The plan is to go to Conway next week, pick up what we need to pick up from there or get things fixed and then from there it'll be a long haul across the Irish Sea uh, bypassing the Isle of Man because we still can't really go there. They do have a procedure but it's on the wrong side of the island. So we're just going to go from there straight back to Northern Ireland, have a little breather, then from there up the Irish Sea is the plan and into the Hebrides and we'll see where we go from there. So, Bev, it's a quiet day on the uh, NA once again. So, what are you going to do with your quiet day? I'm removing butyl squeeze out. This is butyl that we put when we did the windows a few months back, and it's been slowly squeezing out. It's quite normal butyl does this. Um, so, I'm using this plastic, I think it's a tile grout thing, to remove the excess butyl. I'll give the edges a little white with uh, white spirit just to smooth them off and clean them up, and it'll just make the windows look a lot neater. That's my little job for the day. What's yours? Um, I'm basically doing the same job, but I'm going to do it with the cockpit because it's been 
bugging me for ages. The black sealant that's around our uh, teak deck, uh, it's just worn and um, I'm cleaning it out today and then at the end of the day we will actually seal it up with just an ordinary um, sealant and then it'll have all the evening to dry and it'll be done, ready for tomorrow. Don't know if you deserve a coffee. Look at the mess you've made. I wouldn't mind, but I've only done one um, one panel. I've got loads more panels to do as well as the cockpit floor, but it's amazing just how much sealant was actually left. Half a day and I've just managed to do half a side. And what are you doing now, Bev? Undoing all the damage you wrought on the things by sealing it all back up again. <laughs> yeah. But I've done one half side and I'll do the other half side another day and then yes, the base. The, the rubber compound I'm using is quite thick and so it doesn't just flow out as easily as like marine silicon would. Marine silicon I can just run a bead of this but this stuff is much thicker and heavier so it's not going to run a bead. Not, not, not the same way at least. So. Plus um, Bev's being kicked about by wake every now and then don't oh, you? Oh yeah, you know you get all the uh, speed boats and power boats going past doing their thing and um, then the sailing yacht seem to kick up a big wake but uh, or the paddle boarders but the rib rides and the speed boats you know obviously doing 20-30 knots you just get a big wake boom over you go. And yet we're in an eight mile an hour limit. No I think that's on the other side of the bridge I don't think it applies here. Mm, well whatever but Bev's uh, Sorting out the... my problems because I I uh, have unsealed it and now Bev sorting it out. Yeah, gotta seal it back up. The next day, men and I waved goodbye to us with a regatta of small yachts as we went up to Puffin Island to anchor. here in the Menai Straits but we're certainly getting our anchoring practice. We're much more happier with this um, close-in anchorage but it's mainly because we're pointing with the island rather than towards it. The island's not a lead to us. It's not a lead to us at all and um, I think that's the main thing is sort of like the Millport thing really taught us a lot about lee shores and why you don't want them laying but now we're not on a lee shore but we're just at Puffin Island. Uh, Beverly's seen some puffins, the lucky girl, but I've seen an awful lot of activities with um, canoeists, um, motorboats and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> And of course the odd bird, but Guillemots in my case. And the odd seacoast safari thing. Yes, exactly. That's what I mean. Motorboats and seacoast safaris and all sorts of stuff. But lots of activities from people just enjoying the place. And you're about to enjoy the place, aren't you? Because it's curry for lunch. Oh yeah, it's our lunch. And that's what we're doing, just anchoring, practicing our anchoring. But not much sailing, I'm afraid. Mmm, you know. the nice lunch. Yesterday's leftovers. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. It's scorching hot here, though, isn't it? Oh, it's cracking. But it's nice seeing a slightly different view. Mm. As I say, it's just been so mild, but I'm not going to complain. <sighs> so then, are you living the dream? Do you um, like the view? I love the view. Cannot complain about my view because the view is fantastic. And um, we've got to go over to Conwy, which is over there somewhere. 
and uh, we just thought we'll go out early anchor up and then go out when we need to you know and we can just anchor here at Puffin Island it's great but the view is beautiful it's exactly what I wanted out of my home as in somewhere that I looked out at it's, you know I want somewhere that I can look out at the world and enjoy it I love the world it's a great place to be About. We're finally proper sailing. Now, obviously, Bev and I have been sailing, but we've been motor sailing. This is proper sailing. First time I've had any wind for quite a while. I know. <laughs> but we're proper sailing at last. But what I really love at the moment is the fact that uh, we're sailing and there's a yacht more or less keeping pace of us. Another Bavaria 36. Another Bavaria 36 and their sails are not up. <laughs> so we're doing exactly what they're doing but we're using the wonderful sails rather than an engine. I wonder why they're not sailing. It's a beautiful day for it. It's a cracking day for it, you know. You know. Maybe they just feel like if a lady. we just have a bit longer on this, this would be a champagne sale, but you know, it's not bad. I can I can do with an hour. That's what we're going to get, an hour before we have to... Before we have to tack up the thin channel. But yeah, before we have to tack up the thin channel and we'll probably do an engine for that. But yeah. at least I'm sailing now. Get it while you can. <laughs> Yeah, you've just qualified for your yacht master. Ah, but really, I've still got two items to tick off my list. But I can tell you now, <laughs> manoeuvring into a tight position is definitely off. I did a 3.2 in turn to get into this. And uh, I really could have done with some fenders on the um, starboard side. <laughs> Why is the other boat a bit close? Uh, yeah, just a tad. Oh, get another boat in there. <laughs> That's what you've been told by the marina. Don't believe a word of it personally. No, I think he was pulling your leg, girl. 